punishment punishments for our life in this world the fate of those who commit major sins if they die persisting in those sins muslims and sin heaven and hell is it possible for one who has committed major sin to be admitted to paradise without being brought to account question we live in this world for such a short period of time being warned of an everlasting torment or promised an everlasting paradise how can such a negligible part of a person's existence be used to sentence him for eternity wouldn't it be more compassionate to punish someone for let's say if I live for 80 years, then I can be punished for 80 years then be retried? Answer. This world is one which we have been sent to, in order to prove our beliefs, submission and obedience to Allah. If a person believes in Allah as his creator, and believes in his prophets, and does not join partners with Allah, then he will receive the blessings of Allah in this world and the next. Whatever sins are committed, then this person will be either punished to that extent, or may be forgiven by Allah on account of his mercy. However, if a man denies Allah or joins partners with him, then he has become ungrateful to his Lord, and has failed to accept his Creator and Maker. Man has been given sufficient intelligence to know that he has a God, who feeds and nourishes him, and has given him the gift of life. If man does not acknowledge these visible favors, and turn in gratitude to his Maker, then he has become an open rebel and an enemy of his Creator. This deserves the everlasting punishment in the hereafter on account of the graveness and severity of his actions. Like our earthly life, there are crimes that bring about a temporary punishment, others may be overlooked, and some bring about a long-lasting punishment and even the death sentence. For example, in this world a man may sometimes live 60 years of his life in goodness, however, after having lived for so long, he uses only one hour of a day to commit a murder. Do you think he will be sentenced only for one hour, seeing that he committed a crime to the duration of only one hour? No, he may either be given the death penalty or sentenced for life by the court. Can this man say that he should be punished to the extent that he took in committing the crime? Can he accuse the court of being harsh and not compassionate in dealing with him? The answer to these questions is no. Nobody in his senses would view the punishment to be awarded in this manner. Instead, they will look at the grave nature of the crime and then award a punishment. In almost all the prisons in the world, the prisoners are serving years for crimes which they have committed in a very short period of their lives. In fact they lived for years in goodness, and were then caught while committing a crime in a day, a week, a month or maybe a year. Howbeit, notwithstanding the short time taken to do the crime, many of them are imprisoned for many years of their lives. So, punishment is awarded based on the nature of the crime and not on the time taken to commit the crime. Based on this, in the hereafter, there will be different types of punishment, different places for the punishments, and a different duration for punishments. All of these are based on the nature of the sins and crimes which were committed on the face of the earth. Not everybody will be sent to hell forever. Only those who died on the state of disbelief, kufr and shirk, will suffer the eternal punishment. As for the believers, they will eventually go to paradise, however, some may have to face the punishment, light or heavy, for sins, wrongdoings and acts of transgressions which they did in their earthly lives, and others will be fortunate to enter paradise immediately without having to face any punishment. The state of every person will be based, first of all on the mercy, compassion and fairness of Allah, and upon the good and bad deeds of an individual. This world is a place for doing actions, and the life hereafter is a place of being compensated. Prophets were sent, and scriptures were revealed continuously by Allah, to inform man that the earthly life is short and temporary, and the life hereafter is one which will last forever. Man has been reminded through the ages to believe and do good deeds. They have been told about the rewards and consequences for good and bad deeds. Allah has been very kind and generous to man by giving him every type of comfort, luxury and amenity in his life. He has given him the intelligence and reasoning to distinguish the right from the wrong, and has shown him many miracles through the hands of the prophets as a proof for the truth. Allah has shown man what guidance is, and what is misguidance, and then ordered man to adopt the path of guidance and to shun the misguided path. From among men, there were those who believed in the prophets and the message which came to them. They did what was right and shunned what was wrong. They lived their lives knowing fully well that this life is short-lived, and the hereafter is everlasting. They had the firm belief that good deeds will bring rewards in the hereafter while sins and bad deeds will bring punishments. Although, these believers were mocked at, persecuted and tortured for their beliefs, they remained constant in their faith, with the hope that good will definitely come to them. But besides them, there were other people who thought that religion was a joke. They made fun with it, rejected Allah and denied the prophets. They openly condemned the concept of life after death, and believed that it was falsehood. They had no belief about the hereafter, and thought that there was no God, or that there were many gods. 
Their rejection was intentional, they took pleasure in ridiculing the believers. They hated the prophets to the extent that they persecuted them and even killed many. These individuals lived their lives in total freedom, committing every type of sin, without fearing anyone, and with this, they thought that they were on the path of goodness. It is such individuals who rebelled against their creator and rejected his religion. Hence, what good can these people expect to receive in the hereafter? They have rejected, criticized, condemned and mocked the giver of good. From whom can they get goodness in the hereafter? Will they expect to receive rewards from one whom they denied on the face of the earth? Allah will ask them to go to those objects and persons they worshipped for help and assistance. For their behavior, the only destination is that of the hellfire. It is true that man's time on the face of the earth is negligible in comparison to the hereafter. However, it is this negligible part of a person's life which is the deciding factor for his destination in the hereafter. Man has already been told about the matters and the two abodes of the hereafter. It is therefore, upon him to make a choice as to where he wants to go. Allah has been extremely compassionate to man in many ways. He has given man everything he needs to live a comfortable life in this world, and he does not punish him for every sin he commits in this world. Instead, he grants him respite that he may learn different lessons. Today, we see many people who are disbelievers, yet, they are able to live in great luxury and wealth. This is from Allah's compassion, and he does not seize his favors from them. However, he does not like ingratitude, and as such, he will take them to task severely, for their ingratitude which they have shown by rejecting him. So, Allah is indeed very compassionate to man, but it is man who is ungrateful and inconsiderate. Allah's knowledge is perfect and so, when he makes a decision, it is based on perfect knowledge and does not contain doubts in it. Hence, when Allah makes a decision in the hereafter about a person to be punished, it will be upon fairness and justice, and Allah's perfect knowledge about the individual and his deeds. As such, the need for a retrial does not even arise. As I said before, not everyone will be sent to be punished forever. It is only the unbelievers who will be in the fire of hell. As for the believers, they will all be sent to paradise. However, based upon the sins committed by a person, he may have to spend a short period in the punishment before entry into paradise. There will be many others who will not face any punishment. And Allah knows best. Mufti Wasim Khan The fate of those who commit major sins, if they die persisting in those sins. Praise be to Allah. The belief of Allah's Sunnah while Jama ah. is that if a Muslim dies persisting in a major sin, such as zina, slander and stealing, he is subject to the will of Allah, may he be glorified. If Allah wills, he will forgive him, and if Allah wills, he will punish him for the major sin in which he was persisting when he died, but his ultimate destiny will be paradise, because Allah may he be glorified and exalted, says, interpretation of the meaning, indeed, Allah does not forgive association with him, but he forgives what is less than that for whom he wills and Nisa for. 48. Allah does not forgive that anything from his creation should be associated to him. Besides this and disbelief, he pardons the disobedience of whomever he wills, out of his bounty. Or he punishes those he wills among them according to their disobedience, out of his perfect justice. Whoever worships others next to Allah has committed a terrible sin, which is not forgiven if someone dies still doing it. Anisa 48. And there are sahih, mutawatir hadiths which indicate that sinners who affirmed the oneness of Allah will be brought forth from the fire. And there is the hadith of Ubadah ibn as Samit, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, We were with the Prophet, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, and he said, Will you follow me on the basis that you will not associate anything with Allah, and you will not commit zina, and you will not steal? Whoever among you fills that pledge. His reward is incumbent upon Allah, and whoever commits any of those sin and is punished, that will be an expiation for him. Whoever commits any of those sin and Allah conceals him, then it is up to Allah, if he wills he will punish him, and if he wills he will forgive him. And Allah is the source of strength. May Allah send blessings and upon our Prophet Muhammad and his family and companions. End quote. Muslims and sin, heaven and hell. Question, so I've read that a Muslim can go to hell if he commits a sin sins. However every Muslim will go to heaven. How does this go? Will a Muslim spend some time in hell and then go to heaven? There are Muslims who have done the worst sins but believe in Allah and the religion but never asked for forgiveness. How can they be in heaven with the people who never sinned much? Answer by Mufti Abdurrahman Ibn Yusuf. Assalamu alaikum. 
in the name of Allah the Inspirer of Truth. Actually, it has been promised that anyone who has the true belief his heart even if he had been a great sinner in the world will one day enter into paradise after being cleansed of his sins or purely out of the mercy of Allah. Let us look at the following hadiths. Anas reports that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Many people will be thrown into the fire. But by his mercy and grace he will admit them to heaven and they will be called Jahannamayan. Sahih al-Bukhari In a lengthy narration of Abu Huraira related by both Imam Bukhari and Muslim in their collections it states, While passing over the bridge many of them will be caught by the crude nails and be made to fall into hell. But Allah Almighty would ask the angels to take out of hell those who worshipped Allah. Thus the angels will do so, and these people will be recognized by the signs of prostration, for Allah Almighty has prohibited the fire of hell to burn those spots. Hence, these people will be taken out of the fire and they would have been terribly burnt. They will be washed with the water of life so that they will grow out like the growing of seeds. As we can see those who had faith would eventually be taken out of hell and entered into paradise. Thereafter, each person's paradise will be different and according to their spiritual achievements. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's abode will be the highest and grandest, followed by the other prophets and other pious ones. Yubada Ibn al Samit relates that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Paradise has 100 degrees. The distance between one to the next will be like the distance between the earth and heavens, and Firdaus is the loftiest of them. Sunan al Tirmidhi. Another version in Tirmidhi states that if all the creatures of the universe gathered together in one of those stages, it would hold them all. Also, another narration related by many authors informs of the last person out of hell. Allah will tell him to wish for whatever he wants, until he will run out of ideas. Allah will then give him all he asked for and ten times as much. Another version states that he will get ten times as much as this world. Sahih al-Bukhari, Muslim. This will be considered the lowest person of paradise, so imagine the others. Hence, each person's status will be different and those who have not sinned and have gone directly into paradise will surely enjoy a higher status. May Allah grant us Jannat al firdaus Was Salam. Abdurrahman ibn Yusuf. Is it possible for one who has committed major sin to be admitted to paradise without being brought to account? 6. Question. If a person commits major and minor sins, is it still possible for him to be admitted to paradise without being brought to account? So long as he did not ask anyone for rukya or be treated with cautery, and he put his trust in Allah alone? Answer. Praise be to Allah. If a person commits major and minor sins, it is still possible for him to be admitted to paradise without being brought to account, if he repents and turns back to Allah. Allah, may he be exalted, turns the bad deeds of the one who repents to good deeds, even if he committed shirk, murder and zina, as he says, interpretation of the meaning. And those who do not invoke with Allah another deity or kill the soul which Allah has forbidden, to be killed, except by right, and do not commit unlawful sexual intercourse. And whoever should do that will meet a penalty. Multiplied for him is the punishment on the day of resurrection, and he will abide therein humiliated. Except for those who repent, believe and do righteous work. For them Allah will replace their evil deeds with good. And ever is Allah forgiving and merciful. al 25 68-70 Those who do not call on any other deity besides Allah, may he be glorified, nor kill any person. Whose killing Allah has prohibited except for that which Allah has allowed such as the killing of a murderer, renegade or a married adulterer, nor commit adultery. Whoever does these major sins will face the punishment for the sin he has committed on the day of judgment. The punishment will be doubled for him on the day of judgment, and he will remain in the punishment, disgraced and humiliated. But those who repent to Allah and do good deeds that indicate the sincerity of their repentance, then Allah will change the evil deeds of such people into good ones. Allah is forgiving of the sins of those of his servants who repent and he is merciful towards them. Those who repent to Allah and prove the sincerity of their repentance by doing good deeds and giving up sins, their repentance is one that is accepted. Al-Furqan 68-71 all that the one who has committed sins has to do is repent and ask Allah, may he be exalted, to accept his repentance and admit him to paradise without bringing him to account. As for the one who meets Allah with major sins from which he has not repented, then the matter is subject to the will of Allah. If he wills he will punish him, and if he wills he will forgive him, because Allah, may he be exalted, says, interpretation of the meaning. Indeed, Allah does not forgive association with him, but he forgives what is less than that for whom he wills. Anisa 448 
Ibn Jayr at Tabari, may Allah have mercy on him, said, This verse makes it clear that everyone who has committed major sin is subject to the will of Allah. If he wills he will pardon him for it, and if he wills he will punish him for it so long as his major sin is not that of associating others with Allah, shirk. End quote from Tafsir at Tabari, 8450. In the answer to question no. 174528, we explained that the apparent meaning of the Shari evidence confirms that those who will be admitted to paradise, without being brought to account and without being punished are those who are foremost in good deeds, and not those who are moderate, let alone those who wrong themselves. An example of that is the report narrated by Ahmad from Abu Darda, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, I heard the messenger of Allah, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, say. Allah, may he be glorified and exalted, says, interpretation of the meaning, then we cause to inherit the book those we have chosen of our servants. And among them is he who wrongs himself, and among them is he who is moderate, and among them is he who is foremost in good deeds by permission of Allah, Fatter 35 colon 32. Then I gave the Aran to the nation of Muhammad peace be with him whom, had chosen over other communities. Some of them wronged their own souls by doing prohibited acts and leaving out their obligations. Some were moderate by doing their obligations and leaving out prohibited acts, together with leaving out some recommended acts and doing some disliked acts. Some, by Allah's leave, were foremost in good deeds, by doing their obligations and recommended acts and leaving out prohibited and disliked acts. The above-mentioned, selection of this nation and its being given the Aran, is the greatest favor to which no favor can come close. Fatters 32 As for those who are foremost in good deeds, they are the ones who will be admitted to paradise without being brought to account. As for those who are moderate, they will be brought to account and given a light reckoning. As for those who wrong themselves, they are the ones who will be brought to account during the lengthy waiting period in the arena of gathering, then Allah will bestow his mercy upon them. And they are the ones who will say, praise to Allah, who has removed from us all sorrow. Indeed, our Lord is forgiving and appreciative, he who has settled us in the home of duration out of his bounty. There touches us not in it any fatigue, and there touches us not in it weariness, of mind. Fatter 35 34-35 they will say after they enter paradise, Praise be to Allah, who has removed from us all grief on account of the fear that we had of entering the fire. Our Lord is truly forgiving of the sins of those servants of his who repent, and he is appreciative for their following him. The one who has settled us in the everlasting home, out of his bounty, not by our might or strength, where no toil or fatigue will touch us. Fatter 34-35 it was narrated from Ali ibn Abi Talha that Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said, commenting on this verse, They are the Ummah of Muhammad, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him. Allah will cause them to inherit every book that he sent down. He will forgive the wrongdoers among them, grant those among them who are moderate and easy reckoning. And those who were foremost in good deeds will be admitted to paradise without being brought to account. Narrated by Ibn Jayr at Tabari in his Tafsir, 2465. It was narrated by Abu Wa'il that Abdullah ibn Masud, may Allah be pleased with him, said, This Ummah will be divided into three thirds on the day of resurrection. One third will be admitted to paradise without being brought to account, one third will receive an easy reckoning, and one third will come with great sins, and Allah will say, Who are these? Although he, may he be blessed and exalted, knows best. The angels will say, These have come with great sins, but they did not associate anything with you. So the Lord will say, Admit them to my vast mercy. Then Abdullah recited this verse, then we cause to inherit the book those we have chosen of our servants. Fatter 35 colon 32. Narrated by Ibn Jayr at Tabari in his Tafsir, 2456. If the one who has committed major sin meets Allah with it, without having repented, then he has wronged himself and he will be brought to account. His good deeds and bad deeds will be weighed up, and if his bad deeds outweigh his good deeds, then he will be one of the people of hell, unless Allah pardons him. He may be given an easy reckoning, in which Allah will make him admit his sins, then will pardon him. Sheikh Hafiz al-Hakami, may Allah have mercy on him, said. Question, how can we reconcile the words of the Prophet, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, in the Hadith, it will be up to Allah. If he wills he will pardon him and if he wills he will punish him, with what is mentioned above, that the one whose bad deeds outweigh his good deeds will enter hell. Answer, there is no contradiction between them, because whomever Allah wants to pardon, he will give him an easy reckoning, of which the Prophet, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, said describing it. One of you will be brought close to his Lord, may he be glorified and exalted, until he conceals him with his concealment, then he will say, did you do such and such? He will say, yes.
Allah will say, Did you do such and such? And he will say, Yes, and he will make him admit his sins. Then Allah will say, I concealed your sin in the first world and I forgive you for it today. Agreed upon. As for those who will enter hell because of their sins, they will be the ones for whom the reckoning will be difficult. The Prophet I blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, said, Anyone whose record, of deeds, is questioned thoroughly will be punished. Agreed upon. End quote from Alam as Sunnah al Manshura, 171. Sheikh ibn Baz, may Allah have mercy on him, said, discussing those who will enter paradise without being brought to account. The Prophet I blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, describes them as those who adhere to the religion of Allah, 70,000, with each thousand bringing 70,000 more. The first of this believing Ummah will be the first of them to enter paradise, like the moon on the night when it is full. They are the ones who strove against their whims and desires for the sake of Allah, and adhere to the religion of Allah, wherever they were. By doing obligatory duties and refraining from what is forbidden, and being foremost in doing good deeds. Among their attributes is the fact that they never requested rukya, were never treated with cautery, and did not believe in omens. End quote from Majmu of Fatawa ibn Baz, 2860. The Hadith states that they put their trust in their Lord, to the extent that they would do away with some of their needs, by putting their trust in Allah. This is because of their perfect trust in Him, and there is no doubt that whoever achieves perfect trust in Allah will not persist in any major sin. Conclusion Whoever wants to enter paradise without being brought to account, let him beware of major sins, and let him hasten to repent sincerely if he errs and falls into any such sin. And Allah knows best.